Spiritus Sancti Gratia, Illumine Sensus et Corda Nostra. Amen. Please have a seat. Welcome and Jorge uh, Aldinis uh, on this wonderful spring turkey. I would like to welcome everyone who has decided to honor us with their participation. I would also like to. With the permission of the Council of Deans, and in order to obtain the degree of doctor, of the doctor from Radboud University in Armenia, I would like to defend in public my doctoral thesis entitled Secularization of Alevis in Turkey, an extension of Stibri's secularization paradigm and its application to Alevi communities in Turkey. So, the meaning of secularization and whether a society has secularized or not are still very controversial subjects in the academic world of today. A profound lack of agreement regarding the definition of and measurement of secularization is characteristic of intellectual contemporary life. With this in mind, I argue that, this thesis argues that, Stibri's secularization paradigm, which is based on totally Protestant formation, is valid not only for West European societies, but at the same time, it may provide valuable insight into the secularization process of other modern or modernizing societies which have not experienced Protestant formation in their history. How? To render this paradigm valid for non-Protestant societies, his paradigm should be slightly extended. Aspects of those that related to history of Europe or let's say history of Protestant formation should be downplayed while those with more universal relevance should be highlighted. But before that, what does secularization mean? Unlike its widespread use in other academic works and even daily life, secularization in this thesis is not based on religion or religious affiliation only, but metaphysical realm. So, secularization is defined as relative degrees in the social power and social influence of metaphysical realm, religion, religious life mechanisms, superstitious beliefs, folk religions, within a defined period of time and in a particular society. The thing is that this definition is so crucial for the thesis because whatever I claim in this thesis actually makes sense if we accept this definition in this way. Okay, in this regard, the vital question of the thesis is whether it will be possible to come up uh, a secularization paradigm in order to understand Secularization processes that take place in other modern or modernizing societies which have not experienced Protestant formation in their history. My answer to this question is affirmative. It's positive. How? I think three main dynamics from Stibri's secularization paradigm might be enough to trigger secularization process in each part of the world regardless of dominant metaphysical realm, be it Islam, Judaism, Christianity, so on and so forth. Okay, but before going to talk about in detail of this extended version, it is crucial to give answer to this question. Why not other theories but Stibri's paradigm? Neither religious market model and religious individualization theory actually are supported by hard evidence, nor do they, comparison to the classical version of the theory, may give us in, get, may give better insight into the secularizations of societies. It is true that Secure secularization theory is supported by hard evidence, I mean, no doubt about that, but the problem is that it's not easy to get at which point secure secularization theory differs from the classical version of the theory. I mean, emphasizing just one point of the main theory does not make it another theory. Okay, now, how scientific developments, capitalism, and organization accelerate the secularization process in societies? The reason why I choose these three dynamics. First, they can be seen in each society regardless of dominant, uh, regardless of political, historical, or economical, uh, political, economical, or religious history. Secondly, almost all subheadings in Stibri's paradigm, like cultural diversity, religious diversity, social differentiation, functional differentiation, that kind of subheadings are somehow derived from these three main dynamics. Okay then how these three main dynamics accelerate secularization process. First, scientific development 
tend to increase durational consciousness, which allows us to describe and to understand natural phenomena in a broadly cause effect relationship. Secondly, scientific developments reduce the number of cases in which humans would feel need for supernatural power. How about capitalism? Capitalism limits the social power of metaphysical realm in four different aspects. First, the rules of capitalism prevent any religious discipline from intervening with the economy. Secondly, the wealth and prosperity created by capitalism reduce the loyalty to the absolute authorities, whether it's religious or not. Thirdly, uh, the new working conditions came with capitalism actually lead to disintegration of traditional family life. And the last point is that since state loses its economical power, imposing a certain value in a society on a society become much more harder compared to protective economies. Okay, how about urbanization? Uh, mobilization, access to different alternatives, and privatization of personal life, which are the main characteristics of urbanization, created private spaces which are free from religious sanctions, customs, and traditions. Those kind of changes in those kind of changes in human's life somehow restrict and limit the uh, power and prestige of metaphysical realm at social level too. Okay, up until now, I talk about what does extended version assert. Now, before going to talk about the empirical part of the thesis, it is crucial to give answer to this question: What does extended version not assert? First. Contrary to Bruce's paradigm, this extended version is not restricted in a certain time and place. Secondly, this paradigm does not favor or disapprove secularization. It is not an ideology, it is just a concept help us to understand social transformation in societies. Third, this paradigm does not say that all modern societies are secularized within the same, uh, in the same way, in the same direction, within the same circumstances, not at all. Fourth, paradigm says that if a secular domain is sacralized, a secular domain which has nothing to do with metaphysical realm is sacralized, then those sacralized secular domains should be taken into consideration as well. Fifth, for the paradigm, this is crucial, religious affiliation, believing or not believing, or frequency of worship, they are not placed at the heart of the paradigm. Okay then. Till now, I talk about my theoretical part. Now, empirical part. So, to illustrate hypothesis developed in this thesis empirically, extended secularization paradigm has been applied to Arabic communities in Turkey. There are two fundamental reasons behind this choice. First, Turkey is not part of Europe and it's not one of its offshoots. And of course, it has not experienced Protestant Reformation in its history. Secondly, there are many academic works which, which suggest that there has been an Alibi revival in Turkey, especially after the 1980s. So these two reasons, when they come together, make Alibi a very interesting subject for the uh, paradigm. Okay, as the topics, I focus on the issues related to marriage. Premeditating, mate selection, divorce, institution of spiritual brotherhood, and institution of people's court. Why? So obvious. Because the institution of marriage itself is directly influenced by Alibi belief system and rituals. During the fieldwork, to acquire insight into the generation gap with regard to faith, Alibi faith, and its impact on marital issues, 28 core questions were posed to 60 people 20 parents and 30 married uh, children in same structure interview. To analyze this large data, a qualitative data analysis software called MaxCuda, which is very beneficial, especially if you have a large number of files, is used. And in light of interviews, I think it can be said that we can we can claim that the social transformation of Alibi communities in Turkey can be explained by extended secularization pattern. It is true that right now there is a Alibi revival in Turkey. There has been an Alibi revival in Turkey, especially after the 1980s. No doubt, no doubt about that. Yes, the new generation 
of Alevis does not hide their identity anymore. This is true. Because of television programs and radio programs, Alevi belief system and rituals have began to reach wider population. This is true. Alevis have been recognized at state level compared to us more. This is true. And Alevi communities have started to establish associations to promote their identities in the public space. This is all are true. However, despite this Alevi revival, it can be said that Alevi communities have distanced themselves from Alevi belief system and rituals due to the scientific development, capitalism, and urbanization. And the last sentence of my summary should be this. Yes, compared to us, Alevi communities have become part of much more modern life. And at the same time, rather very pervasive secularization process has touch upon all marital issues due to this modern structure. Having presented this summary of my doctoral thesis, now I return the floor to the rector. Thank you so much for this uh, very eloquent and persuasive uh, summary, which was miraculously speaking precisely 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> I now give the floor to a uh, colleague, uh, to you. It's not just working for Ivy Contest, but it might be generalized for Turkish society. Oh, yeah. Yes. As proof thereof, I present you with this doctoral diploma, signed by the rector and the doctoral thesis supervisors. Gracias tibiagibus omnipotens Deus pro omnibus beneficis tuis, qui vivis et regnas per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. 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 